Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this one, we will be talking about CMake variables. Variables are really key to any programming language or technology that you use because they allow you to store information that you get to use later on. And CMake is not that different. So it uses variables and you will be using them all over the place in your career as a CMake developer. So how do you declare a variable? You use the set command, the variable name is going to be passed as a first parameter here. And the second parameter is going to be the value of the variable, the value that is stored in the variable. So in this case, text one is going to be stored inside a variable named var underscore one. You can also use the bracket notation here to declare your variables. It is supported, it works, but I don't really like it because it is weird and uh, not easy to think about. You can also declare your variables in quotes like we do here, but these two forms are really not my favorite. They confuse a lot of people. Avoid them if you can. But one thing you should know about these forms is that they allow you to use spaces in your variables names. And another thing I don't really like, for example, you can set up a variable named var space, really have a space inside and then do another thing. It's really not good. I don't recommend it. That's why I won't be talking about that any further. You can explore that if you want, but it is going to make your CMake code really ugly. I strongly discourage you from doing something like this. Once you have a variable declared, you can read from it. In this case, we want to print the values in our variables and uh, you have seen this syntax before. To read from a variable, you use the dollar sign, open a curly brace, and put the variable name inside and close the curly brace. It is what we are doing here, here, and here to print the values in our variables. And if you do this, you will see your message printed out on the console. Variable evaluation can really be confusing for many new people to see make. It still confuses me if people nest these kinds of things a lot. So let's do an example of variable evaluation here. Here we are creating a variable named one. This is the name of the variable and the value is ABC, okay? These are three characters. If you print this one variable, you should see ABC printed down. Now, on the second line here, we are creating a variable named two, but its value is using a variable evaluation or a variable reference, like some people like to call them. So we will evaluate this variable, okay? One, its value is going to be plugged in here. The value is ABC and we will concatenate DE to the value that we have in one. The value is going to end up being ABCDE. Take a moment to really think about this. On the third line here, we will evaluate the two variable. So the value is going to be ABCDE and we will add a space and FG. If you remember, the same story we saw in the message command with unquoted or next arguments, a space is going to be acting as a separator. So we will take what we have in the two variable, which is A, B, C, D, E, and separate that with the F, G here. But all that is going to be a value to the three variable. So what we will have inside the three variable is A, B, C, D, E, and we will separate that with a semicolon and we will have FG. This is what we will have stored in the three variable. Now let's go to number four. The variable is named four and it's going to have this value. So if we print it out, this is what we will see. But look at number five here, okay? This is the craziest I could come up with. There are more crazy syntaxes, but I don't really want to burn my brain. So let's just do this here. And what this is going to do, we will go to the most nested evaluation we can do, and that happens to be four. So we will evaluate four here, and four is going to be this text here. So T-H-R-E, we will evaluate this, we will concatenate another E to this, and it is going to become three. And then we will evaluate what we store in a variable named three, and we will get the same thing printed out here. Take a moment to really understand this. This is what I do to try and print the data in these variables. And uh, this is going to print the values. 
Take a moment to really understand what is going on here. This is simple. If you really take a moment to think about this, you will understand it. Variable evaluation is done using the dollar sign and wrapping the name of your variable inside these curly braces. And inside these curly braces, you can have any number of nested variable evaluations if it makes sense for whatever you are trying to do with CMake. Now, what we have seen is one kind of variable in CMake because we have three kinds of variables. There are regular variables like we have been doing here. So one here is a regular variable, five here is a regular variable, but you can also define and read from environment variables in CMake. You declare an environment variable by using env in front of your variable that you create here. So this is going to create a, an environment variable named my path. This is just a syntax you have to remember. And the second parameter here is the value of your environment variable. So some of you must be thinking, if I define an environment variable in my CMake script, is that environment variable going to show up on my system? Because environment variables are really known for being system specific. If I go on my system here, let's actually do that together. So let's go to the start menu and say env. You see edit environment variables for your account or edit environment variables for the system. Let's go for system here, do environment variables. If you go here, you see a bunch of environment variables in my system here. Now, if I define an environment variable in my CMIC script, is that environment variable going to show up in my system here? And the answer is a big no. Why? Because environment variables you define in your CMake project are just going to affect the current running instance of CMake. Okay, I repeat this. Environment variables you declare in your CMake projects will only affect the current running CMake instance and they won't affect the system. But you can read environment variables from the system in your CMake project and this is what we are doing here if i go back to my environment variables here so let's do env and go where i have my environment variables if i go down again you see that i am trying to read from the temp tmp variable that i have here so i am reading it in my cmake script here so this is the syntax to read from an environment variable, you say dollar sign, env, curly brace, and the name of the environment variable here. We are trying to read from this environment variable here and printing its value here. You can do this in your CMake project if it makes sense for whatever you are trying to do. Environment variables are the second type of variable you can have in CMake. You can also have cache variables. And these are variables that are going to stick around as long as you have your project built. Let's say I build my project for the first time. I have a few properties that I don't want to be setting all the time. These are going to be stored in my cache variables. And if I try to build again, they will be reread and reused. And that's going to make things run a bit faster. Later on, we will see that cache variables are stored in a file named cmakecache.txt if I remember correctly, but these are also variables you can use in your CMake projects. You say that you want to declare a cache variable by using the set command in this form here. You say the name of the variable, okay? You say the value, you say a cache string, and this is what is going to show up in GUI tools if you build your project in GUI tools. I will also show you these GUI tools later on as we go forward in the series. But now the message I really want you to keep in mind is that you declare a variable using the set command. You read a variable by evaluating it using dollar sign, curly braces like we do here. And we have three kinds of variables in CMake, regular variables, cache variables, and environment variables. Before we head over and play with these in our editor, I also want you to see that we have a bunch of predefined variables in CMake. One you have seen before is CMake version, so we can read from it. We have CMake command, which is going to print the location of the CMake executable on your system. If you need this, you can read it and print it out or use it in your CMake project. We can get the location of the current list file 
that CMake is processing and we can print it using this variable here. We have a lot of variables and you can read about them by visiting these resources that I have shared here. This is really all I had to share here. So I think it is time to head over to our editor and see many of these things in action. Okay, here we are in CMake. We will be working in the script named two dash variables that CMake as you see right here. And we are declaring our variables. The first one is going to be named var1. Its value is going to be text1 in quotes. We set up another one in brackets like this. Again, this is a syntax I don't recommend. Don't use it unless you really, really, really need it. You can also do something like this. And if you try to print this, this is going to evaluate var1 and print text1. The second one is going to evaluate var2 and it's going to print text2. The last one is going to evaluate var3 and print its value on our terminal. Let's try to run this. So let's say CMake. Again, we will be using script mode. We will say to dash and autocomplete. And this is going to say text one, text two, and text three. This is the syntax we use to make variable evaluation in CMake. Drill this in your brain. I don't think there is much to say about this. You can use spaces in your variable names. And by default, CMake is not even going to like that. And that's going to be a sign that it's really something you shouldn't do. I won't be exploring this further. You can explore this if you want, because I don't really, really want to invest my time in this. It's a bad practice. It makes your code much harder to read. Let's talk about variable references. Here we are declaring a variable named one. And if we print it, this is going to say the value we have in one. Let's try to do that actually. So let's run this script again. And if we do this, it should print ABC because it is what we have stored in the one variable that we are printing here. Now let's go to number two. What is going to happen if we print the variable two? The variable two is defined by appending a DE to the value that we have stored in the variable named one. So we are going to evaluate what we have in one and stick it here. This is basically what we will do. And we will append DE. The result is going to be A, B, C, D, E. And it should be what we see when we print the two variable here. So let's come back again and do that. And if we print, we should see A, B, C, D, E. And it is what we indeed see in our terminal here. So we can keep going. Let's do number three here. If we print three, we will print what we have in this three variable. And what do we have in there? We will grab what we have in the two variable and stick that here, A, B, C, D, E. And we will add a space. Again, remember that if you are using naked arguments or unquoted arguments to a CMake command, and set here is a CMake command, the space is going to act as a separator. So we will have A, B, C, D, E and separate that to F, G or separate that from F, G. That's what we have here. But if we print three, all these things are going to be cramped together because remember the message command doesn't really do any processing. It is just going to cramp all the arguments together. Let's try to run and see what happens here. Please don't be confused by this. So we have A, B, C, D, E and F, G. But inside, in memory, where the data for what we print in three here is stored, these things are going to be separated. I really want you to keep that in your mind. We will print what we have in four, and it is going to be the data here. So let's do that. It's one thing. So T-H-R-E, but number five is going to use T-H-R-E, append another E, and then evaluate what we have stored in the three variable and print it out. This is what we are doing in these nested variable evaluations here. Make sure you understand this. Let's run this again and we should see A, B, C, D, E, F, G printed out. So play with this, try to modify it and really make sure you understand this because this is a main point of confusion for many people getting started with CMake. I am also going to show you that we can play with environment variables. You can define your own environment variables using the syntax we have seen before. This is going to be the value. This is how you read from environment variables. You say dollar sign 
env and pass the name of your variable in these curly braces again if we try to print this it should print my environment variable the value i have stored in and you can see it right here okay so this is our value and we are printing it out right here this is an environment variable but you can also read from system environment variables so tmp is going to contain again let's go there and show you on my system tmp contains what does it contain c windows temp and z e s enable sysman contains one let's see what we get if we're trying to print these variables we should be able to read from them from our cmx script and sure we have the value printed here and we have the one printed here and it is what we have in our environment variables on my system here let's make sure everybody can see it. the value from temp is what we have right here printed the value in this variable is one and it is what we have printed right here this proves that we can read from environment variables from our system this is something you can do if it makes sense for whatever you are after in your CMake project. Let's look at how we can define and read from a cache variable. The syntax is what we have here. We use the set command. The variable name is cache var. In this case, you specify the value. You say cache, say the type of the variable. I think CMake supports ints and whatever. You can read the documentation if you need this kind of thing and you can pass a description to your cache variable. I think we will have a chance to talk about this, but for now, keep in mind that cache variables are one of the types of variables you can define in CMake. And you read from it like you read from any other kind of variable. So if we print this, this is going to say the value. Let's try to compile and run the value. This is what we have here. And CMake defines a bunch of predefined variables that you can read from and use. In this case, we are just going to give you a few examples. We will print the CMake version. We will print the location of the CMake executable that my running instance is using. We will also print the location of the current list file, which is the location where this current script that is running, which is two dot variables that CMake is located on my system here. Let's try to run and we should see this printed out. So the location of CMake is in cmingw bin cmake.exe. This is the location. The script is stored right here and the CMake version is what you see on top here. You can really do all these things. I hope this really gives you a good introduction to working with variables in CMake. You declare variables using the set command. You read from variables by using the evaluation you see here, dollar sign, curly and variable name you read from environment variables using the env syntax you see here and you set up cache variables using the syntax here and cmake defines a bunch of variables that you can try to read from one thing i should warn you about is that some variables don't work well if you are in script mode because the script mode is really designed to test your cmake logic but commands or variables that are specific to projects are not going to be available or they are going to behave weird if you use them in the CMake script. One of those kinds of variables is CMake CXX compiler, a variable we have used before. It is really relevant if you are using a CMake project and I'm not even sure what it's going to print if you try to use it. Let's try here. Let's see what we get. So let's tell Copilot to print the C++ compiler in use let's see what this does you see it's going to give me the command to do that which is really cool so cmake cxx compiler if we try to run this let's see what we get it's going to say message called with incorrect number of arguments but the problem is that we are running a script and it's not a project and this variable is specific to projects so you will get these kinds of errors keep this in mind not all variables are going to be usable in your scripts some are project specific this is really all i had to share in this lecture or video i hope you liked it i am going to stop here and i will see you next time